quick facts about Make-A-Wish. The Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, as you guys probably know, they grant wishes to children with life-threatening medical conditions and to enrich the human experience with hope, strength, and joy. It's a pretty amazing uh, organization. Uh, they celebrate this year granting their 10,000th wish to a child. A lot of the wishes are to either be something for the day, to go somewhere, to meet someone, and they do an amazing thing. About an average wish costs about $6,000, and this month we're trying to grant uh, a 17-year-old kid, his name is Joseph. Uh, he has uh, leukemia, and he'd like to go to Hawaii so he could scuba dive and uh, golf. And he was with us Saturday night at an event we hosted uh, last year. Joseph missed his entire senior year of high school at Ron Colley. And uh, he's, gonna, he's well enough to go back to high school to finish his senior year this year. Uh, he's going to be a wrestler there at Ron Colley. And uh, we're trying to send him to Hawaii. And uh, it's an amazing thing. Like I said, uh, they've granted over 10,000 wishes. And uh, last year alone, in 2011, Make-A-Wish of Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana came together and granted 862 wishes uh, for children. And tonight we have uh, a family. Uh, Erica is here, and Erica uh, is going to come to the Pub Theology stage and tell her, her story of her son's wish being granted. So let's welcome Erica to the Pub Theology stage. Jim, give your mic. Erica, uh, come this way. But don't trip and fall. I'll help you. Don't go towards the light. <laughs> Erica, welcome to Pub Theology. We're so glad you could be with us tonight. And your son, Spencer, correct? Yes. He had his wish granted. Tell us a little bit about your son. Um, he's six and a half now. He, his wish was granted when he was four and a half. Um, he has, uh, he was, had a stroke in utero. Um, and so he's paralyzed on his right side. Um, has blood clotting disorders, seizures, that kind of thing. Um, and he wished more than anything in the world to meet B.B. King. B.B. Um, King, the guitar yeah. player B.B. King? <laughs> yes. So tell us, how does your four and a half year old son, how does he develop a love affair for B.B. King? I want to hear this story. Um, I had one CD and I used to dance with him every night to come rain or come shine. And I happened to leave it on one night and he just fell in love. And then all of a sudden he knows every song, has every DVD, every book. I mean, we read the, really? his autobiography at night. Yeah, he's a huge fan. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, he's actually, it's the first time anyone's ever wished to meet B.B. King. Really? So this was a pretty big deal. So tell us about how that all came about. You uh, you contacted Make-A-Wish, they contacted you. How does that happen when you're a part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Um, I contacted them. I actually lied to my four and a half year old. I told him that he was going to meet B.B. King because I figured if you go through all this, yeah. you get to you know, and you really want to meet B.B. King, you're going to meet B.B. King. Um, I didn't know how I was going to accomplish that when I said it, <laughs> um, but I knew that it would happen. And um, so I contacted Make-A-Wish, the doctor just signs off on um, the conditions, and then you kind of just wait. Because it was B.B. King, um, there was no history to be able to say he would meet him for five minutes or for, you know, a couple of hours. I mean, we just didn't have any kind of... It, it, Frame sure, a, sure. a reference to tell him. Um, so I randomly get a call one night, and they're like, "Hey, can you be in Tennessee in three days?" And I'm like, "Absolutely!" Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, we went to Nashville, Tennessee, to his blues club, and um, it was amazing. We were there for like three days, and um, you know, they they give you all this. There's a zoo pass. There's all this cool stuff you can do. And all Spencer wanted to do is walk back and forth to the Blues Club. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go to the zoo and see yeah. some animals? No, I want to hang out with Baby King yeah. here. And so that's play what some we riffs. did for three days. Exactly. <laughs> and he got up on stage and um, was pretending. And I thought, oh God, this is going to go terribly wrong. You know, we're going to get kicked out. Um, but he, we went the night of the show. And again, we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I didn't even know if he could stay awake, to be honest with you. It started at like 10.30. Your son or B.B. King? Uh, that <laughs> <one's> actually. Because <laughs> B.B.'s no spring chicken. No, I thought maybe no, he needed no. a nap time. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I no, love B.B. No. King. I'm so, yeah. so, anyway, go um, ahead. Brooks Brothers made him a tuxedo, because the one thing he likes about B.B. King is his cummerbund. Yeah. Um, so he had a tuxedo, and he had his little tennis shoes on, and um, we went and had dinner, and it was amazing. Um, his son came out and gave him a pin, um, and he said, my dad wants you to have this, and it was just a lapel pin that the band wears. Yeah. 
Um, so he put that on, and then um, when they started playing, Spencer doesn't like loud noises, so I didn't exactly know what was going to happen. Sure. Um, but they put us in front of the front row, which, again, made me really nervous, because I'm like, he's going to rush the stage. <laughs> he's been rushing the stage for like three days. Does this guy really know what he's you know, getting himself into? Sure. Um, but it was amazing. He walked out, B.B. King did, and um, it was so surreal. It was like, it was only the two of them. Um, he kept waving at him the whole time, B.B. King, and he called him up on stage and gave him guitar picks, and um, it, was, it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And then Spencer fell asleep, because that's what you do when you're four and a half, and it's yeah. like midnight. It doesn't matter what happens, you just tap exactly. out. Somebody sure shuts off the switch, and it's, yeah. yeah. And then while B.B. King was singing, he would look at me, and he would make the sign like, yeah. like he was checking on it the whole right. time. It was really sweet. And so they took us back to the green room, and um, Spencer, uh, his um, granddaughter came and woke him up, and said, my grandpa's ready to meet you. And so Spencer's face obviously lit up, and yeah. we went up on stage, and they held hands and talked, and it was so cute. How many are glad to learn that little tidbit? It is. Let me, let, me, let me go back to the text questions that have yes. come this evening. Yes. How does someone keep faith when they're so sick, or keep faith or, or hope? You know, I think it has to be, um, I think you keep hope regardless of the situation, because I think, honestly, if you lose hope, life becomes unlivable. And so even if you, if you, I mean, I've never been terminally ill, but, but the stories I've heard about people, I've heard about people that actually have been some of the most joy-filled, uh, peaceful people that are in some of the most dire situations. And so I, I think hope is something that you fight for regardless of your situation, because without it, life becomes unlivable. And I think the faith piece, when you're sick like that, um, you know, I think so much when we have something where we're sick or we're having a struggle in this life, when you're connected with faith, I think it helps you tie into the fact that no matter how poorly or terrible things go in this life, if you're connected to a faith in, in Christ, you know that, you know what, if 70 years or even 70